How many know that Jesus can turn your life around? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. He can turn your mourning into dancing, your sorrow into joy. Praise God. Praise God. No, it don't matter how, how messed up your life is. Jesus can turn it around. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good to see you one in the house of God to worship Him today. Praise God. Taking advantage of what God has got to offer you today. Praise God. Book of Ezekiel, the 18th chapter. We began reading at the 20th verse. So the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Let's praise you one more time. God, we love you. God, we praise you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. Those that have gathered together this morning to hear your word, God. Anoint us and use us for thy glory in our hearts and ears to receive your word. We'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Praise God. You may be seated. We'll read those verses again. It says, The soul that sinneth it shall die. The soul that sinneth it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, nor the father bear the iniquity of the son. For the righteous of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. For just a little while this morning I want to preach to you this, this thought. The senseless death of a sinner. The senseless death of a sinner. Ezekiel begins to lay it out about the transgressor, about the wicked, about the unrighteous, and then again, what will happen if the wicked turns from his way? And what will happen if the righteous turn from their ways? And then only in verse 22, he begins to say, and all his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him, that is, if he turns from his wicked ways, in his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Then he asked the question, he said, Have I any pleasure at all in that the wicked should die? Said the Lord. And not that he should return from his ways and live. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, Shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In other words, what he's saying, he said, if, if the righteous man turns away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity in the same way that the wicked man does, he said his righteousness won't be mentioned anymore. His righteousness won't be mentioned anymore. And he said, do the according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, he said, yes, we should shall, shall he live. All his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he has trespassed, and in his sin that he has sinned in them shall he die. And then they began to say, he said, yet you say the way of the Lord is not equal. Some say, well, that's not fair. In other words, they said, that's not fair. And he said, you say that the way of the Lord is not equal. He said, hear now, O house of Israel. Is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? 
Then he said, when a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in him, for his iniquity that he hath done shall he die. Amen. And again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. You know what he's saying? You've got an opportunity. Amen. You've got an opportunity. The soul of citizens shall die, but you've got an opportunity to turn away from that wickedness. Right. You've got an opportunity to turn away from that sinfulness. And if you turn away and start to do what's right in those things, you shall live. But if you turn from your righteousness to do the wicked things, you're going to die. And then they say, well, the way of the Lord is not equal. He said, no, it's your way that's not equal. Amen. But look, he said, because he, because the wicked, he said, again, the wicked man turns away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet, saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Therefore, he said, I will judge you, O house of Israel, Everyone according to his ways, said the Lord. He said, Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. In other words, don't let sin ruin you. Don't let sin ruin you. Don't let you turn to your transgressions ruin you. He said, Cast away. From you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why, he asked, why will you die, O house of Israel? You've got the opportunity to make things right, so why will you die? Amen. In other words, let me put it this He said, I have no pleasure. In the death of him that dies. I don't have any pleasure in this. Said the Lord. Wherefore turn yourselves. And live ye. Let me put it this way. Let me, let me put all this pretty simple. In the simplest way that I can put it. When God offers you salvation. And you refuse. You die a senseless death. Amen. Let me say that again. When God offers you salvation and you refuse, you will die a senseless death because you don't have to die. Amen. He asked Israel the question, he said, why will you die? Why will you die? The senseless death of a sinner. If you leave this walk of life and you don't know God, you are dying a senseless death. You didn't Amen. have to die that way. Amen. That's right. You didn't have to die that way. You chose that on your own. Because we know that God Himself has already paid the price at Calvary, shed His blood for you and I, that we don't have to die, but we can have eternal life. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Praise Jesus. God. You go to the book of John, the 8th chapter, verse 21. Notice what he began to tell them in verse 21. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Then he goes on and explains to them why they can't come. He's this said the Jews when he, when he killed himself because he said, Whether I go, he cannot come. And Jesus said unto them, You are from beneath, I'm from above. You are of this world, I'm not of this world. 
I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins if you believe not that I'm he, you shall die in your sins. He said, if you, if you don't believe I'm he, or who, who am I? The Christ. He said, if you don't believe I'm he, they didn't believe he was the Christ. He said, you're going to die in your sins. Of course, we know what, what John 3.16, and everybody in here could probably call just 3.16, what he said, he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He said, If you don't believe in me, you're going to die in your sins. It would be a foolish day. It would be a senseless day. The senseless death of a sinner. When you have the opportunity to make things right with God. Amen. When you've got that opportunity. To make things right with God. See in Romans the 6th chapter verse 16. It said know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey. His servants ye are to whom you obey. Whether of sin unto death. Or of obedience unto righteousness. Amen. There it is. There's the choice again. There's the choice again. See, when, when he sets before us life and death, and you choose death, you die a senseless death. Because you didn't have to die that way. You don't have to die that way. He said, But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered up you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. But what did you say in, in Ezekiel about if the righteous man turned away from his righteousness? The Bible said he'll die. Amen. He said, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' service to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now ye yield ye members' service to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end, notice what it said. For the end of those things is death. Anything that's stopping you from living for God, anything that's standing in your way or gets between you and God, the end of those things is death. So it would be the senseless death of a sinner. Be the senseless death of a sinner. But now being made free from sin, and become servants to God, you have fruit unto holiness and to the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. Amen. Huh? Ezekiel said, The soul of sin is it shall die. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there it goes back again to the choices. I can choose death or I can choose life. You can choose death or you can choose life. I've got the opportunity, you've got the opportunity to make things right with God. If you walk out of here without God and you die, you died the senseless death of a sinner. Amen. It's senseless. It's senseless. senseless. It doesn't make any sense to turn down eternal life. Amen. Huh? Amen. There's no, there's no common sense in it. There's no way to justify it. Come on. Huh? That's right. There's no way to justify walking away from God. Amen. When you walk away from God, when you turn away from the salvation that He has offered you, it is a foolish thing. Amen. And it results in death. It's the senseless death of a sinner. Mm -hmm. Because you had the opportunity to make things right with Him. 
For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Right. I don't know about you, but I choose life. Amen. Amen. It would, it would, it, it, and we don't, we don't say it. We don't say it with our voice, but we say it with our actions. When God says you, you, you choose death and life today, and you turn away, you're saying I choose death. That's senseless. That's sens senseless. See, the Bible tells us in John 10 and 10, it says the thief comes. That thief is, 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 is Satan. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill. This, this is all Satan wants to do to you. Steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Yes. And that word abundantly translated from the Greek means to superabound. I don't know about you, but I, I, I want to superabound in life. Amen. I want to superabound with eternal life. So I can choose. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 I can choose. I can choose. I don't know about you, but, 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 but there's only one sensible answer. And that's to choose life. Right. That's to choose life. You see, Let's look at Revelations, 20th chapter, verse, verse 11 in the 20th chapter. Now I want you to notice something in, this, in these scriptures that I'm reading. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled, there was found no place for them. There's no hiding place from God. There's no hiding place from God. But I want you to notice something in verse 12. And I saw the dead. Now I want you to notice as, that, as I read at the white throne judgment, everything that was judged at the white throne judgment was dead. Huh? And I saw the dead. I don't know about you, but God's given me eternal life. Right. God's given me life. Thank you, Lord. Everything that's judged at the white throne judgment was dead. All right. Come on now. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Yeah. Jesus told his disciples they came back rejoicing because the devils were subject unto them, but he said. He said, don't rejoice because the devil are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. And another book was opened, which was the book of life. And the dead, see there's that word again. And the dead were judged. We which are alive and remain. Eternal life. Eternal life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. They were dead. The dead were judged according to their works. The dead. Not the life, not, 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 not to those that had eternal life. But the dead. The dead. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to his works. And death, and death, mm -hmm. and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Jesus said in verse 20, back back up to, to, to chapter 20 and verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Amen. On such a second death hath no power. Right. Amen. 
on such the second death hath no power. The second death is when death and hell, Amen. those that didn't have eternal life, those that chose something foolish rather than Jesus, Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was, was not found written in the book of life yeah. was cast into the lake of fire. You see, when God offers you salvation and you refuse, you'll die a senseless death. But Jesus gives us an invitation to come. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Amen. See, we have an opportunity today to come to Him. He's offering us eternal life today. Abel said in John 7 and 37, He said, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried. Say, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He said, let him come. Bible, Bible said, whosoever, whosoever will, let him come. Whosoever will. The old song says, whosoever will surely meaneth me. <laughs> it means you too. Amen. Whosoever will, let him come. Bible said he's not willing that any should perish, but I, that all should come to repentance. He said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Praise God. Praise God. Rivers of living water. I'm going to tell you what. We ought to get to the place that the Holy Ghost is just flowing from us. Huh? Anytime we face a problem, anytime the enemy comes against us, that Holy Ghost ought to be flowing from on the inside of us. That we don't matter what comes our way, we have to go to God. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, let me just put it this way. If you say, I believe, your next step should be being filled with the Spirit. Come on. Huh? Amen. That's pretty simple. He said, This faith he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. If I say I'm a believer, my next step should be being filled with the Spirit. Amen. Well, the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Paul asked some of the believers and followers of John, he said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, well, we had so much as well. There'd be any Holy Ghost. He explained it to them because next thing you know, he's laying hands on the limb and they're receiving the Holy Ghost. But I can cast it off. <coughs> and I can say it's not necessary. But if God offers you salvation and you refuse, you will die a senseless death. Amen. You will die a senseless, the senseless death of a sinner when it don't have to happen. It don't have to happen. No, sir. If you walk out of here today without Jesus, and He calls you out of this walk of life, and you don't know Him, then you've died the senseless death of a sinner. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have to die that way. That's right. I will stand. But he said, if you if you will turn from your ways, if you, in other words, what he said, if you'll repent, he 
If you'll repent and turn to me, you will live. You will live. But he said, if you turn away from me, you'll die. That's pretty simple. Don't take a genius to figure that out. Praise God. Praise God. So I can choose, and you can choose today whom you'll serve. Praise God. Praise God. As they sing this morning, give you an opportunity to come. See, sometimes, sometimes we just need to come and let God know whose side we're on. Praise God. I'm going to ask you to come if you need to repent. You come and repent at this altar. And ask God to fill you with His Spirit. If you want to just come and praise Him and thank Him for the eternal life that He's already given you, I want you to come and praise Him for that. But whatever need that you have this morning, you can find it in Jesus. You can find the answer to that need in Jesus. Come as they sing this morning. Come as they sing.